I know grief. Oh. It takes time. Please, Rose. Listen, if you're Irish, you have a wake. You eat, you cry, you drink, you vomit, and you're done. If you're Jewish, you cry, you sit, you eat for seven days, you put on 10 pounds, and it's over. We Italians scream, dress up a donkey, hire a band, and that's that. It's these Southern Protestants who make it a way of life. Don't you try to get me. Not me, no. You're the one who wants to get yourself killed, not me. Always happens with you. Last minute, you always want to grab onto somebody, take somebody with you. Just let go. The following program is intended for mature audiences. A friend of mine, uh, was up about 20 floors with a jumper a few years ago. The jumper grabbed him, they went off, 20 floors down, just mashed them all over the thing. Couldn't tell which legs were with which, which arms were with which, and it was a terrible mess. I, I tell you, I almost threw up myself. I just like your name and address, that's all. Why? Well, like I said, it's such a mess down there afterwards. It's a, it makes identification impossible, even if they find your driver's license, all that blood and everything. I think. I think I'm gonna puke. Now don't do that, son. I mean, all those people down there looking up, fire sheep looking up in space. <laughs> Will you let me say what I have to say? Maybe I don't want to hear what you have to say. Maybe I'm happy not knowing anything. Or maybe you know already. He's sick, man. I'm not stupid. I could see there was something that wasn't right. You know, Dorothy, people think if you live to be my age, you should be grateful just to be alive. Well, it's not how it works. You need a reason to get up in the morning. Sometimes even after you find one, life can turn right around and spit in your face. Welcome. Holy shit. Well, I'm just going to record a little bit. I don't know for how long. And I'm just going to post it directly up on my phone right now. I decided, rather than panic, the smart move would be to just try to chill out. Stay to ourselves at least as much as we can. And hopefully not catch this shit obviously because of my pre-existing conditions from what i understand if i catch this shit it's over for me but you know we've done everything the way we're supposed to do i mean i'm not really doing anything out of the ordinary I wash my hands. You turn your page and wash your hands. All the time, I've had hand sanitizer on my keychain for years now, so that's not new. We always make sure we have some in the house. So while everybody is going crazy, ripping this shit off the shelves, we got some, so we don't need to worry about it. But I mean, this is just insane, man. It really is. I got an appointment on the 30th, so I called my doctor, just because schools all over the state are canceled, restaurants now aren't going to be open for long periods of time, gyms, all types of shit, but what's even more heavy than that is they, they've set into motion a curfew. Now, I know neighborhoods used to have them, but this is a little bit different. The governor went on the news earlier this afternoon and said that everybody in the state of New Jersey needs to be in their house by 8 p.m. Between the hours of 8 p.m. and 5 p.m., you're not allowed out. All non-essential and non-emergency travel in New Jersey is strongly discouraged between the hours of 8 p.m. and 5 p.m. daily, effective this evening at 8 p.m., until further notice. To be clear, 
and I think I may have contributed to this uh, confusion over the weekend. This is not a curfew, but it is strongly recommended, and travel is strongly discouraged. But if you don't need to be on the roads, you should not be on the roads. If, alternatively, you are a health care worker or other employee essential to our response, we still need you to get to work and to the vital jobs you are doing. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you and recognize that you are the front lines in this fight. But for those who do not need to be out, please, please, please just stay home. Remember, don't be touching your face. I don't know how long this shit is going to be for, but or if it's even going to really do anything. The curfew for it. If it's even going to make a difference, I mean, it doesn't seem like a lot of people have really been using their fucking minds to begin with. I mean, have you seen, there's pictures everywhere. Pharmacies, the stores, shit is bare shelves everywhere. I don't understand what the obsession is with toilet paper. Yeah. There's no toilet paper for months. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand why did everybody think that I need to go run out and grab as many rolls as I can. Well, technically, you know, we should have. You know, well, not to get as many, probably to, you know, buy some. I think we have some, though. We got a little bit. We got a little bit, but whatever. I mean, we'll manage. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll manage. I mean, it's, it's just fucking, it's crazy. The fact that everybody is going out of their minds like this it's not very helpful at all i don't see what the point is like oh cool so if i catch i'm not gonna catch the fucking coronavirus because i'll just shield myself in toilet paper because that makes a whole lot of sense you know you would think if everybody's going and running and grabbing toilet paper why would they not get fucking wet wipes all these people are just grabbing toilet paper, still gonna have dirty ass hands. Anyway, stupid. I just, I don't understand it. So we got a curfew between 8 p.m., 5 a.m. I called my doctor today just to be like, dude, what is, what is the plan? What's going on here? I know the appointment's not to the 30th, but still, it's already the 16th. We got to figure out what all is going on. So, surprisingly, they said, I'll get a message to the doctor and find out what she wants to do. But more than likely, she's probably just going to call the medicine in from the office, which they never do that. Apparently, they're legally not allowed to. That might be made of bullshit, but because it's a narcotic, you know, I know they've had restrictions on what you can do and what you can't do but anyway they called me back and they were like oh we we realized you don't need it yet like no i know that that wasn't that i wasn't calling to get the shit sent in right now i was trying to figure out what the plan is because i really don't i don't want to go i don't want to leave to be around especially in places where there are people in and out of them all day long whenever possible i mean i try to avoid that to begin with but especially now because it's even worse there was a point in what i was saying oh which is that we don't need to call your shit in right now so what we'll do is we'll push it off until april 3rd or if we have to then we'll have you come in on the 10th and they're like if this is all still bad on the third like dude Schools are closed at least until the middle of April. And the way that this shit is going, I don't see it changing necessarily anytime soon. I've actually flirted with the idea of calling these people and been like, yo, let's do a Skype call. You want to count my pills? You can do it via Skype because I'm not trying to catch this shit. I mean, I don't know if it would do me in, but I would be very upset. If it happens to do that to me. And I'm over here 
not enjoying life at all whatsoever. I mean, at the very least, this is definitely the time to be fucking lighting up because it feels like we're going down. But I haven't, even though I really would like to badly, especially to calm down. Because, dude, I'm telling you, I only turn the news on now to watch the weather. That's it. I can't do it. I put the news on even for a moment, and it's it's immediate panic. That's all they're doing is just stressing everybody out. So, I mean, BC had a good point. He was like, don't sit around and watch the news all day. It's not going to do nothing for you but make you anxious and worry about something that's out of your control. But then at the same time, this dude is talking about go outside and live your life and don't do anything differently, which is insane. I mean, that's exactly how we get into these positions in the first place. But I know I got to do a live stream with them. I've honestly been pushing it off just because I really don't want to talk about this fucking shit anymore. I really don't. I don't like to talk about it. It trips me out. I've just been basically trying to do shit the right way. Stay away from everybody. The good news is social distancing is not an unheard of concept to me. I've been apparently social distancing for years now. And it's worked out well so far. I mean, plus, I'm already in bad shape, dude. I got hit with, I got hit with shingles. For those of you that don't know what that is, <clears throat> shingles is a disease that it usually affects people in their, I want to say in the age range of 50 to 70. And I'm sorry about clearing my throat so much. Usually I have a cut that type of shit out. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to look it up just to be sure. So, excuse all of this. Come on, any day now would be great. I need a new phone badly. Here we go. Okay, common, wow, really? It's common 60 plus years old is common for you to get this disease. The average age, we're going to go through all these questions. And then I can get into this a little bit. 50 years old is the average age that you can get it. The virus can lie dormant for years. Most adults... With dormant virus, never develop shingles, but for some reason, the virus reactivates several times. Shingles is most common after 50 years of age, but it can appear at the, any age if a person has previously had chicken pox. Which, that is exactly, that is exactly what it was. Now, I got, I got chicken pox twice as a kid. So after that, I thought it was over. I thought I was going to be all right. I never stopped and thought to myself, oh, shingles is something I need to be worried about. I've never even heard of it before. But knowing my luck, lo and behold, 21 years old, I fucking, I got hit with, I was hit with a cold, right? Directly after that, I caught the flu. And then directly after that, I got hit with shingles. Now, I found out after the fact how I got it was because my immune system was so beat up from being sick for about a month, two months prior that my my body just couldn't fight it off anymore. So what happened was the shingles wound up activating. And let me tell you something, dude. That was the worst that was the worst. I mean, honestly, it might have been the worst that I've felt. I don't want to say in my entire life, but it's definitely, it's definitely in the top five. hundred percent. I mean, fever, diarrhea, 
cold sweats, regular sweats, vomiting. Like it's my it's my nightmare, dude. Like sick all the time. And then on top of that, I get these fucking red bumps growing on me. I don't know what this is. I've never seen it before. I never talked to anybody about this. You know, when you don't know about some shit, it's real easy to stay in the dark. Especially because these things don't come up in casual conversation a lot of the time. Shingles doesn't care. Right, but I get these bumps on my left side. And they look they look like pimples, except they're bigger, right? And it's just, it's there, and I'm feeling pain. I mean, it's all clustered together in one spot. It's nowhere else on my body, but I feel like garbage. And it was in the summertime. I remember this because while everybody was going to see the fireworks on 4th of July, I was outside throwing up into a fucking garbage bag on the deck just to be able to sit in the sun to try to warm myself up because I was fucking shaking, freezing cold. It was horrific, dude. It was so bad. It was so bad. I literally tried to drink. I want to say, I got to look this up also while we're here. Let me make sure which one is it. I think it's Pedialyte. Okay, I can't spell for shit, but we know that. It gave me four different possible answers. Well, that's not it. Let's try this. Is this it? That's a Pedialyte. P-E-T-A-L-I-T-E is also known as petalite a castronite is a lithium aluminum some type of material i'm not on my laptop so i can't get them to say the word out loud well that's not it we're learning things apparently and this isn't it either pentalite is a lamp okay you know what we're gonna have to go we're gonna have to go the difficult route. We're going to look up infant vitamin water and see if that gives me any type of result. It's got to be in here somewhere. I know it was for infants. Alright, maybe vitamin water was the wrong thing to put. We'll put vitamin drink. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. Does nobody... I'm horrible at searching things apparently definitely gonna be put on a fucking watch list after this maybe if i put in sorry if i'm touching the speaker oh god damn it i really don't want to have to edit this best vitamins nope breastfeeding hiccups Infant vitamins, that's not what I'm looking for. That's why I was spelling it completely wrong. P-E-D-I-A-L-Y-T-E. -E. They wonder why people can't spell. Because they don't put these things properly. Is Pedialyte good for babies? For infants under one year of age... Consult your doctor. For children one year or older, begin with a small dose, frequent sips every 15 minutes, increase serving size as tolerated, continue for as long as diarrhea is present to maintain proper hydration, 4 to 8 servings, which is 32 to 64 fluid ounces, may be needed per day. Okay, so, the reason why I bring this shit up is because I remember it was like in a little mason jar looking deal. And Jen's mom, Jen's mom had these because she just had her baby. Well, no shit. So she was like, oh, I had to give this to the, to the kid, basically. So maybe you could try to use this. It, it should be light enough for you to be able to hold it down. So you could try to drink this. Get some vitamins in you. Maybe it'll make you feel better. That's my dryer for anybody that's interested. 
turn it back on because I got a load in there. But no, it didn't work. Didn't work at all. It was as soon as I put it down, it came right back up. All right, that's it. Everyone, get up. Hey, hey, what are we doing? Not that way, the way it came in. And what eventually wound up happening was I wound up going to the hospital because everybody's looking at it and they're like, oh, maybe what is it poison ivy? Who knows what it is? Maybe you got fucking herpes. Like the whole, the whole thing. Everybody's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. Nobody can figure it out. And now it's starting to break open like a, like a scene at an alien where it, it, it's literally dripping everywhere. I mean, it was, it was horrific. It was a horrific experience. But regardless, I wound up going to the fucking hospital, into the ER, into a horrible hospital, which will remain nameless because I'm, I can't edit the name of it out. I mean, I can, but honestly, the whole point is to knock this out quickly, just put some extra content out, try to keep everybody's mind off of what's all going on, but... I'm working on an intro for something else. I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, but I'm in the process of working on it. But I go to this horrible hospital where I, I will quote a pharmacist who said this to me one time. We were in the middle of having a conversation about hospitals and all that because it was like 2 in the morning. I came back from going to the hospital for one of the many reasons why I would go. And... And we got into conversation. She said, and I quote, I would rather die on my way to a different hospital, which she named, obviously, in the conversation, rather than go to that place. That is the worst one that there is anywhere. Horrible. But And you know what? She's right. Everybody that's ever gone there has come back with stories. I mean, we've, we've gone in there for a number of reasons. Obviously, because it is the closest one, and a lot of the time, you don't have the luxury. If you're heading to the emergency room, you don't really have the luxury or the time to be able to go, you know what, I'm going to go to the other one. Now, there have been times, obviously, where we've made an executive decision and gone to the quote-unquote better hospital, but not a lot of the time you don't get that choice. So I go into this fucking place, and I'm in a wheelchair. I can't walk around. I'm weak. I haven't really eaten anything because I can't hold it down. I'm not drinking nothing. I go to the hospital, and I'm sitting in the wheelchair, and I had to go to the bathroom. So Jen says, I'll wait out here in case they call you. You could go to the bathroom, you know, I'll be waiting here for you when you get out. Obviously, it goes without saying that if you're in this position, you're extremely weak. And I was, I won't even say falling asleep. It was more like I was passing out every couple of minutes. Because I was so weak, I couldn't even keep my damn eyes open. Between throwing up, you know, it was really difficult to do. But I managed to wheel myself into the bathroom. And I'm taking a piss, or at least trying to. After I was finished, I sat back down in a chair and passed out again. So while I'm laying there, I hear some guy come up behind me. And he goes, oh, no, not, not today. You're not doing this you fucking dirtbag, something along those lines, where he then grabs the back of my wheelchair, and he is pushing me out of the bathroom, he pushes me halfway down the hallway between the bathroom and the waiting room, and then he proceeds to thrust the wheelchair out, I guess as hard as he can, in Jen's general direction, and he goes, I believe this belongs to you. This is a hospital, not a dope house, so keep an eye on your junkie boyfriend. And she's like, dude, he's got something going on. He's sick. He's not on drugs. And of course, if you don't have any experience with this, 
let me be the first to tell you that whether you're sick or you're in pain, a lot of people, especially in the beginning of the opioid crisis before heroin really made its tremendous comeback, people automatically assumed maybe it was just me. I don't know if anybody else has ever had this experience, but people automatically assumed that I was on drugs or in the search for drugs. They never, before even having a conversation with me, they already made their mind up of what they thought was fucking going on. But, you know, eventually they would look like assholes. They would never apologize, but they would look like assholes whenever they figured out what the real story was. In this case, actually had fucking shingles and had a reason to be out of my head the way that I was. It wasn't a good time, but I eventually get into a room and one of the doctors comes in to look at me. And this motherfucker goes, I've never seen that before in my life. We're going to have to keep you overnight for observation. So, Jen winds up going home. Because what could she do? Sit around and stare at the walls with me? I'm in real bad shape. I don't want to do that to her. So, I'm like, you know what? Just go. There's literally nothing that you could do here. I'm just going to sit here and wait until we try to figure out what the fuck is going on. And <laughs> this is a very distinct memory, dude. At some point in the early morning, probably 2 or 3 in the morning, I get woken up by the doctors. And there have been a couple that have come in and out. And they would look at my side, stare at it for a few minutes, and then leave. Now, eventually, I wake up. And I got three doctors standing over me who are all looking at it. And they're having a conversation amongst themselves like I'm not even laying there going, I don't know. I don't know what this is. I've never seen this before. Have you? No, I, I definitely never have. This is something new to me. Maybe this is some type of new disease. Who knows what it is? They're scaring the shit out of me. But they're like, look, dude, we're going to have to we're going to have to put you in quarantine. We can't we can't have you around other people just in case this is something that's very serious and we need to keep it you know basically uh what the fuck i can't think of a better word for it well i was gonna say we need to keep it under wraps like it's a secret but you know we need to keep this thing contained there it is we need to keep it contain contained and i'm like all right you know what this is this is fucking insane I'm I'm out of here. I'm I'm getting the fuck out of here. They're like, well, you you can't leave. I'm like, no, I'm I'm going to leave, and I'm going to go to my regular doctor. That's what I'm going to do, because I want to see if this lady has a better idea of what is going on here. Now, they obviously are like, well, if you leave now, you have to, you have to go to the doctor immediately, we're going to be keeping an eye on the records and shit to make sure that you actually go, so I mean, I call the doctor, I make the arrangements, and I go to this lady's office, and I swear to God, this is a day and a half, maybe, of doctors in the hospital, nurses staring at me. Nobody knows what's wrong with me. They can't figure it out. They got me thinking I'm going to die of some horrific disease that nobody has ever heard of before. The doctor walks into her office, literally says, all right, lift your shirt. Let me see it. I lift my shirt up. She takes a two-second look at it, and she goes, you got shingles. It's not some kind of crazy disease nobody has ever heard of. And then she's like, where, where did you go? Did you go to the... With the sweet finger roll! And I was like, yeah, she goes, you know, I should have fucking known. Those people have no idea what the fuck they're doing over there. Because they have so many different inexperienced doctors and nursing staff. Like, it's a, it's a wonder that people go there for treatment, never mind, basically get out alive. And I'm paraphrasing, but that's pretty much, she did for sure say that they have no idea what they're, what they're doing over there. 
right? So it turns out that I got shingles. Now we know this. There's a huge weight lifted off of my shoulders. At least we know what it is. Knowing what it is is half of the battle because now we can figure out how can we treat it? How can I get better? And the most important question possibly is what are going to be some of the issues that on the other side of it, if there's going to be any long-term repercussions. So it turns out if this is actually true, which we're going to look into it in a second, but apparently shingles or like chicken pox is in the herpes family. Most of you are probably familiar with the vaccine against chicken pox, another herpes virus. There are many human herpes viruses and to date we have no vaccines against any of the others, only the chicken pox one. We're also trying to develop a vaccine that will protect women and men and children, and ideally children actually, from the genital herpes virus and from the oral herpes virus. The herpes simplex virus, which is the cause of oral and general herpes actually comes in kind of two flavors. Oh, that's nasty. The herpes type 1 and the herpes type 2. And the herpes type 1 is the one that's most commonly associated with cold sores. That shit on your lip got some shit on his lip, dog. And the type 2 is the one that's most commonly associated with genital disease, but both can cause both. So we need a vaccine that's going to protect against both of those. We're developing this vaccine in collaboration with Dr. Bill Jacobs' lab here at Einstein, and we're very excited about the progress we've made so far and that we might really have in our hands an, an ideal vaccine to protect against the herpes viruses. And it floats like a butterfly and hits like a tree. Like the STD herpes, but it's not an STD. It's the same way, it's in the same family as herpes is, the same way that like a cold sore is in the herpes family. It doesn't mean that you have a sexually transmitted disease, but rather the it's it's in the same germ family somehow this is this recording is gonna be a fucking nightmare just because i'm sure i'm touching a mic i should have had my headphones in i don't know what the fuck am i doing let me grab let me grab a fucking pair of headphones i don't know why i didn't think of this sooner I guess it's been so long since I used Hangouts, I didn't even consider it. Now I'm probably going to have to edit this whole goddamn thing. Son of a bitch. And action. We know your time is valuable. Thank you for holding. Someone will be with you as soon as possible. Make sure you get your whole head in front of the shotgun. Thank you for calling. <laughs> Thank you for calling. At Laughing Birds on Twitter, at Laughing Birds Pod on Instagram, follow the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Anchor.fm. Check your local podcast listings for other available platforms. shit about shit and pull up your pants I think we're okay so let's stop it and save it just in case got the headphones in and I made sure to save this so we don't run into another issue losing it like we did last time but let me do a sound check and make sure this sounds all right all right it's fine i mean i don't know i don't know how bad the other one is going to sound but hopefully this will make up for that to be completely honest with you the reason why i didn't want to i don't want to edit this right now is simple it's because probably two days ago i went into that room my editing room recording room and i threw a bunch of shit together 
I recorded an episode, and in the same day, I wound up cutting two intros. Well, no, hold on. I recorded two episodes in one day. I didn't know that they were going to be episodes. At the, Well, one I did, and the other one I was just kind of riffing and decided, you know what, let's just turn it into an episode so that it's one less week that we have to worry about making content for, and let's just put it out there. So I, I cut two intros for both of those and then edited Hi, them. What? She got the wrong oranges. Oh. Uh, so she gave me oranges. I, it's mandarin ones. Like the ones that my mom gave me, but you know, they're bad. Yeah. We we'll ended up editing both of them in the same day. I went in there probably at 10 o'clock in the morning, if not earlier, and I didn't leave the fucking room until. 2 o'clock in the morning the same day. So I don't really want to go back in there and throw this thing together and then start editing it again because... You know why? Because you want to know what he's watching? Golden Girls! <gasps> yeah. All by yourself. Yep. Without me. Without a chick making you watch it. I don't care. I like this show. They might be in my jacket. I know. I was just fucking around with you. Because remember, I did tell you, you know, that I wanted to take a picture of you. Because that's not common that you see a guy a lot, watching uh, yeah, a something male, like this. Male, or even, you know, somebody at your age when you were watching it. You know, it was mainly like, I don't even think girls my age when I was watching it was watching it because I was still watching I Love Lucy and yeah. fucking the the racist wife beater one day one day uh, the honeymooners pow, right to the moon yeah the honeymooners that was a big one too but it's not like I went and found this on my own I'm going downstairs I watched this show because of my grandmother that's how I found it it was her show, she enjoyed it, and we used to watch this together. Which is why watching this show is kind of difficult for me. But I do it anyway. Hi, I'm back, honey. <laughs> well, you forget. I forgot. I forgot to put a fucking paintbrush. And I found an eraser of yours, it was in the dryer. I know, that's how I get to clean. Well, it's on top of the dryer now. I took it out and put it on and that top of be it. A joke. I wouldn't doubt it if you actually, it actually did that. It actually does make them all clean when you put it in the washer and the dryer. This one must have been pretty dirty though because it's still. It's still black as shit. Not as as it was, but. Because my racers get dark as shit. Where I had to use like three blank pages just to fucking. Get and all get the, the old shit off. Or of I had to fucking rub them on my pants, and by the time I faded my colors. You know, that's why you see white stripes. Yeah. They're not your cum marks. They're my fucking erasers. <laughs> fucking ridiculous. Ah, motherfucker. What? Ah. What? Ah. What? Drink now. You didn't take it out. You took yeah. lettuce out. No, I had a fucking tea. Oh, no, you. Right there. Oh, I was gonna say I didn't see you have one. <laughs> no. Jesus, this whole thing is completely derailed. Oh, okay. hi. I believe you. That was not necessary. But she can break my balls all she wants about me watching a Golden Girls. I don't give a shit. I like this show because I used to watch it with her, which my grandmother, I mean, when she was alive. The one on my mom's side, she passed when I was 15, 16, something like that. Maybe a little bit younger. Definitely in that age range for sure. But now, when I first turned this on, it was kind of hard because it was laughing at some of the jokes but then at the same time 
kind of like in the middle of an episode, I catch myself tearing up a little bit because it makes me think back to that. I mean, we had a love-hate relationship, and we were all not that close, but that's one memory that I have that is actually good. And it sucks to go back to watch this and know that she died, especially with some of the subject matter that they talk about. But we can get into that a little bit later. I mean, I completely lost my place of where I was in this whole shit show of a story that I'm telling. But I'll pick it back up. I know I mentioned that I was at the regular doctors. I don't know if it stopped recording while I was in the middle of switching. Hopefully it didn't. But I know I was at the doctors and I mentioned that she was telling me what it is. And it turns out she gave me you actually have to take you're supposed to take herpes medicine for it. That's literally what you do. Here's what you need to know about shingles, just in case maybe you know somebody that will have it in the future, maybe you've had them in the past, you might know some of this shit already, but I think it's kind of interesting, it turns out that shingles attaches itself to your glands, so in other words, anywhere on your body where you have sweat glands, I think let me pull the Google back up. Now I want to see. Shingle is more common. Yeah, 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 yeah. Symptoms, pictures, treatment. Fuck me. Let's try a separate search. Because I want to make sure that I have this right. Let's see. Shingle starts on the glands, right? Scott Love, MD, family medicine physician with the DuPage Medical Group, says that shingles can be difficult to diagnose, can begin with headaches, swelling of lymph nodes, or other symptoms until the telltale rash appears. What do shingles look like when they start? Are they itchy? Fuck yeah, they're itchy. That's the other thing I forgot is you can't touch it because you'll make it spread. It's got, got good spread. spread. That's a Bill Burr reference for those of you that don't know. I'm pretty sure it's off of you people are all the same. The shotgun bit. Yeah, here we go. We'll just go, which one, I should have just went into this article in the first place because it turns out that's where I'm clicking anyway. Shingles is a viral infection that results from, oh God, the VZV, the same virus that causes chicken pox. Typically affects a single sensory nerve ganglion G A N G L I O N ganglion I don't know how to read and skin surfaces that the nerve supplies. Anyone who has chicken pox can later develop shingles. In fact, according to Center for Disease Control and Prevention, an estimated of one in three people in the United States develop shingles in their lifetime. However, a person can only develop shingles if they have had chicken pox or exposure to the virus that causes it. This virus can lay dormant for years. Most adults with the dormant virus never develop shingles, but for some, the virus reactivates several times. Oh, fuck. Shingles is most common after the age of 50, but it can appear... At any age, if a person has previously had chicken pox, in this article you can learn about shingles, including symptoms, complications, and treatments. Okay, so we got... What is this? Symptoms. Because it has been a while, I actually forgot that it was itchy, but god damn was it itchy. Now that they mention it, I remember being yelled at like, don't touch it! Don't touch it, you can make it worse. Shingles usually affects one side of the body. This is most often the waist, the chest, the abdomen, or the back. 
Symptoms can also appear on the face and in the eyes, mouth, and ears. The virus can also infect internal organs, which that's the one thing that she did say I was extremely lucky because I could have developed it in my eyes. Some people have gone blind because of it, which can you imagine? That's got to be the one of the worst things that can happen in life, dude. I mean, horrific just horrific this is why i read that already oh no i didn't hold on i skipped shingles typically affects a single sensory nerve gang one i know i was saying that wrong god damn it near the spinal cord cord not corn called dorsal root Whatever that fucking word is. God damn it. Can we click it and search it? Well, click on the right word, dumbass. Please. Copy. Open a new tab. Paste. Go. Ganglion. I think I said that right. Hopefully you can hear that. I don't know if it read it out loud to you or not. A structure containing a number of nerve cells in the body, typically linked by a synapsis and often forming a swelling on a nerve fiber. Alright. Whatever the hell that means. Back to reality. There goes a rabbit. I hate that song, but that's what it makes me think of. Alright. Why are you scrolling up on me? I was in the middle of reading that. Thank you. Okay. Shingles typically affects a single sensory and a nerve. I forgot how to say it already. Ganglion. Near the spinal cord. That part I read. This is why it occurs in a specific area and not all over the body. The pain results from a nerve. Oh, stop it. Involvement rather than the rash itself. They're trying to uh, uh, keep the schools closed until after spring break. When is spring break? I don't know. I just know St. Patty's is coming. Spring break spans late February, mid April, I guess. But that's more than two weeks. That would be like. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't say when exactly. Unless they take the spring break. I will look it up a different way. It says it's usually March 14th to the 21st. And we're not even in. Wait, here we are. It's March 16th. So that would be after the 21st. That's when it is. All the way back to the top again. Pain results from nerve involvement rather than the rash itself. Some people have pain but no rash. Others may have a rash with pain that is accompanied by symptoms such as fever, chills, or headache. Symptoms can vary in nature depending on where it appears in the body. Wait, are you talking about the corona? No, I'm talking about shingles. Oh. Constant dull, burning, gnawing pain or a sharp stabbing pain that comes and goes. Skin rash resembles chicken pock rash but only affects certain areas. Fluid filled blisters that develop as a rash. That's what you had. Yeah, that was the one. Blister and skin rash may appear in one or more distant bands with sensory nerves in the skin called dermatomites. Common locations include the chest, abdomen, back, and around the waist. Usually occurs on one side of the body. Depending on where... Or depending on the symptoms, depends on where it's distributed. If the rash affects the face, symptoms usually appear on one side, around the eyes and the forehead. Kind of like lines. Yeah, kind of. Muscle weakness, headache. Eye symptoms, ear symptoms, mouth symptoms, internal shingles. 
That's which you can you can have it on the inside. I know, that'd be throat. Which is completely fucked. But the fever, fatigue, chills, headache, upset stomach. And I get headaches a lot. <laughs> so and I ache a lot, so I won't even know when I do get it. Yes you will. You will know. Most likely I will have the outbreak inside first. Pain, tingling, numbness, itching start to affect a specific part of the skin. After two weeks, a rash appears, red blotches, itching, blisters develop to continue to do so for three to five days. Blisters may merge, forming a solid red band that looks similar to a severe burn. Gentle as touch may be painful. Inflammation may affect the soft tissue under and around the rash after seven to ten days the blisters gradually drying as a result they disappear and leave minor scarring usually lasts for around two to four weeks it is contagious until the blisters dry up and i left a lot out of that simply because the description is extremely disgusting most people only have an episode of shingles once, but it can reoccur in some people. So, you know, there is a, there is a shot for it, like a fucking flu shot, but it's a shingles shot, and it's supposed to prevent you from being able to get it again, because you can only get the shot after you've already had it. But unfortunately, you have to be... 55 or older to be able to qualify to get the damn shot regardless of whether you have had the fucking disease or not which really doesn't make any sense i don't understand why you have to be but they also said people that had pneumonia who have got pneumonia can't get this shot because remember, I went to try to get it besides the latex particles that was in it. That I'm not old enough to get it. It's a rough, it's a rough thing to, it's a rough thing to deal with. And I, mean, I feel like they're fucking pneumonia shots too. They have fucking latex in it. I don't even remember why I fucking brought this up. Probably because of the corona and everything else made me think about that. And, you know, fucked up all of it is. It is pretty scary. But, I mean, now knowing everything that I do know, it's difficult not to get freaked out when shit like this happens. I mean, I do feel like we're in the middle of a fucking movie right now. Yeah, I was talking about how fast this, this coronavirus came and started conquering, you know, slowly closer to us. This was the zombie apocalypse. We would be fucked. Well, what fucks me up even more than that is I don't understand how some people, I think it was two days ago, I saw on Netflix that some type of fucking epidemic disease movie was trending number one, which blows my mind that in the middle of dealing with some shit like this in real life, somebody can be in the state of mind to go watch a fucking horror movie. They could be doing just, you know, you know, work. Still, that's fucking, I don't, I don't get it. Because, like I said, it's like, oh, let's watch this, you know, just in case that this happens. Like I said earlier, watching the news for five minutes will put me in a fucking panic state, which I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm staying up only on, only on the important shit. Like we already know there's six, the last time we checked, there were 69 cases in the state with four of them being in the county that we currently live in. Okay. Which is... So your brother was right. Yeah. I cause the thing that my mom sent me, I thought it was... It said only our city. Six, yeah. But it wasn't. It's the whole state. Something people, one person out of them died in... Well, yeah. One of them, one of them did 
one of them did die for sure. Well, no, two people died because yesterday they said it was a, a woman that passed away. And today they said it was a guy in his 50s that died. So I'm pretty sure that makes it two people in New Jersey that and died. And remember the one that we got before the alert? Yeah. You know, that a guy from our county passed away. You know. Yeah. Oh, wait, didn't pass away. He they had fought, it. They caught it in time. Yeah. I'm sure there probably are cases where it has killed people or can kill people, meaning the shingle is not the coronavirus. I think if I'm calling it the Zika. That's all right, no difference really. Well, remember, we had the Zika virus, you know, from the, the fucking mosquitoes. Oh, and before that, SARS. Well, that's the same disease. What, what, the corona? Yeah. It's in the same family as SARS and MERS. MERS. That's, that right. was another one, yeah. I think, that came out of China or Japan or some shit. There's a nearly 50,000 people over the age of 60 get shingles each year. 90% of adults have had chicken pox, which are at a risk. And one in three adults will get shingles in their lifetime. So I twice. that means that you could get it. Which luckily I didn't I pass did. it on. Yeah, I was stupid and I was touching it. Same with my mom. Yeah, yeah, but you guys got lucky I didn't pass it all to you. I don't know why. I guess just because you got lucky. But it was horrific. Who should get a shingles vaccine? You have a greater chance of getting shingles as you age, which is why a vaccine is recommended for everyone 50 years or older. The vaccine reduces the risk of shingles and prolonged pain at the rash site. So, I mean, again, it doesn't help people that are under 50, but I guess they assume that you will have your immune system be strong enough to be able to handle it. So, I mean, I don't know. That's, I have to figure out what am I, what am I going to do with all of this now? I can stitch it together. I really didn't want to, well, I know I, I brought that up briefly before, was I went in that room at 10 a.m., maybe sooner, and didn't get out till 2 in the morning. And there was only editing two episodes, throwing a couple intros together. You talking about last night? Was it last night? What, uh, it was the night before. One in until 3 and then 2.20. Jesus. So yeah, it was a, it was a long time. Because I'm, normally you try to, you know, like get out of there by 1 o'clock. Yeah, but that's because I usually only do one where that day I did two of them so i've been trying to make it so that i don't i don't go crazy in there but at the same time still make sure that i have shit that's set up and ready to go i mean obviously i don't need to do this right this second because i have i'm pretty sure all of april is taken care of now but still i just like to make sure that i have it up just in case because you never know for one and for two when shit like this happens it's good to try to not think about it all of the fucking time but one thing that i know for sure is we're gonna have to eventually do that live stream which i've been putting off because i don't want to I don't want to say worry about this every second, which is why, you know, I'm trying to watch some shit, take my mind off of it. That, and I don't want to fucking argue with somebody about whether or not this shit is real. It doesn't, I don't care what other people think. Here's the point. Curfews are in place. Everybody is going crazy buying fucking all the food they can get their hands on, toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Whatever reason you want to think that this shit is happening, or even if you don't think it is happening, 
The point is, people are fucking dying from something, dude. Whatever it is, I don't want to get it. So, you know, I try to take I this know shit. Those people are actually really dying. I mean, you just be saying, you know, people are affected, people are dying. Either way, I'm not willing to take the chance. That's all that matters. Well, so, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's not, you know, I'm just saying, you know, it could be so, you know, so much shit, you know, and you gotta think about all the people that paranoia. Well, I mean, I've already heard a conspiracy that this is coming. I originally heard it from Eddie Bravo on Joey Diaz podcast. And then I seen it on Facebook earlier today, somebody shared it, saying that the coronavirus is a made-up thing. That's not what it is. Really what it is, is a radiation poisoning from China trying to launch 5G. They built cell phone towers that apparently have made people sick. What I don't understand about that theory is then how the fuck is it spreading, which I'm going to look up real fast, and then I'll shut this shit down. Can radiation poison be contagious? Radiation is not contagious. The usual sense that one can catch certain diseases by being exposed to the illness. So I don't understand. Hold on. After gamma radiation passed through the body, a person is no longer radioactive and can't expose to other people. Based on what we know, Chernobyl at Chernobyl, there were also no effects on children who were exposed to radiation in Turo or whatever, wherever that fucking place is. So, well, that's the thing. I guess that's where everybody is getting this from because kids are carriers and they don't seem to be affected by it. I don't give a shit. These are contagious. We should lock up all the kids. Yeah, really. I don't give a shit what it is. All I care about is that I don't get it. And that's it. I don't want to really argue about whether or not it's real but the conversation is eventually going to be had i just don't feel like having it today or for that matter the last couple of days but eventually we will get on it it. 